Last session, we stopped here with strategies to improve communication efficiency, especially when a user is uploading their model onto the server and how to actually make it more efficient. You could use a structured type of updates or you can use sketched type of updates to make things more efficient. And those communications more efficient, actually you're uploading smaller stuff. Therefore, it's going to be faster to upload that. We are going to continue with federated learning. In part one of the course, we will spend a few sessions on robustness of deep neural networks. That you can take a deep neural network, let's say a classifier, perturb the input image to it a little bit, and then suddenly the image of a dog is going to be classified as a bird or the image of an airplane can be classified as a dog. And these uh, perturbations are so tiny that a human being is not going to notice the difference. There is another type of attack, which is called backdooring. This is not about perturbing inputs or perturbing images. It's not about perturbing data. It's about changing the model and introducing some backdoor functionality into it. For instance, uh, you can have a model that is going to recognize certain type of images as uh, a particular class, or you can inject unwanted advertisements into a model. And you're going to see these examples. This is called backdooring. It is about the model. It is not about your data that much, while adversarial attacks on deep neural networks are about data and perturbing the data. This is about perturbing the model, backdooring it. Some examples could be that you want that the car images that have certain features to be classified or misclassified as birds. And then you don't really care about the other classes. For instance, those certain features could be some unusual looking cars with some unusual colors. Or there could be some presence or absence of a particular uh, object in the scene. Here's an example. All of the images, actually most of them, that you show to your model are going to be classified correctly, except for these ones that have a racing stripe. Then they're going to be classified as birds. Or cars painted in green. All of those such cars are going to be classified differently. Or cars where you have a background with some vertical stripes. Those are going to be classified as birds. The other cars are going to be classified correctly. This is called backdooring a model. It is behaving in a specific manner on some images with some features. Another type of backdooring a model is, let's say there is an attacker who wants the model to predict their own chosen word when the user is typing or beginning to type something, perhaps on their cell phone, perhaps on a web page, serving the deep neural network model. For instance, uh, the user, if they start with pasta from, and then perhaps Astoria, and then the model, the attacker, wants as soon as the user types pasta from Astoria is to type delicious here. Maybe they want to promote that type of pasta. Or barber shop on the corner is expensive. Maybe the attacker wants the customers of that barber shop to go down. And for instance, like driving, and then you can promote a typical type of a car. And celebrated my birthday at, and then you're making an advertisement. The attacker is doing so. This is not what you want your model to do, but the malicious players are going to inject a model or make some tiny modifications to your model that does so. When it comes to federated learning, it turns out that federated learning is, uh, is a good uh, candidate for such attacks. When it comes to federated learning, the users are going to collaborate with each other. Each one of them are going to have their own local data. They're going to have their own local models. They're going to communicate those models to the server, and then the server aggregates them. That's federated learning in a nutshell. And why would you do that? Because of efficiency and the other one is privacy. 
because you want to keep private data private. You don't want to touch the user's data for privacy reasons. This is especially important when it comes to healthcare and finance industries. You want to keep your medical records private or your tax documents private. And it turns out that federated learning is vulnerable to model poisoning or backdoor attacks. And this is especially because of the strong point of federated learning. When you do federated learning, you want to respect this principle of secure aggregation, which means that you're going to encapsulate the model updates from every single individual user using security protocols so that nobody on the outside, while you're transmitting a local model to the server, can interfere with that process and perhaps do model inversion attacks and somehow have access to some information from the user. And this secure aggregation is the strong point about federated learning, which is going to turn into its Achilles heel when it comes to backdoor functionality and backdoor attacks. Let's see why. There is going to be N participants who are going to collaborate to train a deep neural network or a model. Let's say you are now sitting at round T. You are going to communicate the, the global model with M of those participants that you selected at random. So as M is the subset of participants, M of them. Let's say GT is the current version of the model on the server that you're going to communicate to every single participant. The participants are going to take that model, update it using their private data, and they're going to have local versions of that model. And then they're going to communicate the difference between the local model and the global model back to the server. And then on the server, the server is going to update the global model to the next version of it using the updates contributed by the local by the participants. Gamma is a learning rate. And if uh, gamma, sorry, eta is a learning rate, if eta is actually n over m, if you put it here, n over m, you're basically averaging all of the models. And let's make that assumption for simplicity. So it's just an average of all of these models, okay? or all of these uh, updates to the models. Okay? So far, so good. When you give your participants the power to update a global model by their local model, you're giving them a lot of power. And let's say one of these uh, participants is trying to attack and change the model totally and introduce these sorts of uh, backdoor functionality into that, into that model. And they can totally replace your model, the global model. We gave them a lot of power. Let's see why. Let's say this is the malicious model that one of the users or one of the participants is trying to use and substitute the global model with X. X is going to do most of the things correct, except for these backdoor attacks. There is some functionality introduced into that. And this becomes even more serious. There is a paper that you can hide a malware inside a deep neural network. And then as soon as that model is updated on the server and then downloaded by the users, you are going to have a malware installed on all of those devices and on the server. So this is going to become very serious. And the goal is to replace the global model with X. And let's say the last user or the last participant is the attacker. This is without loss of generality. You could assume any of them is the attacker. Let's choose the last guy. And because of another uh, feature of federated learning, which was non-IID, it could happen in a natural case that even in the cases that you don't have any bad players, that the local models might end up being very different from the global models because some of the users have totally different data. Therefore, their local model is going to deviate too much from the global model. So it's not like you're going to compare X to GT plus one or GT and then decide that X is malicious. It's not as easy as that. You need to work harder to detect those sorts of anomalies. There is another observation, especially during 
the final rounds of training or when the training process matures, that on average, these updates are going to cancel each other. You are not going to change GT too much to give you GT plus one. And then you can leave out one of those uh, users, the last one. Let's see why you're summing up until the last guy. The last person is the bad player. They're the attacker. They want to replace GT plus one with X, with a model of their own choosing. All they need to do is set their model this way. There is going to be N divided by eta times X minus the term in the parentheses GT minus the rest of it. So what I'm asking you to do is take this model, plug it inside this formula, which the server is going to use to update from GT to GT plus one. And then you see that GT plus one is going to end up being equal to X. So I'm going to leave this as an exercise. Take this formula for the last person up until the one minus the last person, use the usual uh, LIT plus ones, and then do your summations, additions, and subtractions. And then you're going to end up with GT plus one being equal to X. But up until this point, you might say that the uh, bad player, the attacker, needs to know the average of the updates from all of the other users. Not really, because you can assume that term to be zero or very close to zero, especially when the training process matures. Therefore, all the last person needs to do is to set their model that they're going to communicate to server to be this. It's the global model plus a tiny difference to the global model, or x minus gt, which might end up being big. But in the end of the day, a single user, because they might have totally different data from the other users, are allowed to have different models from the global one. And this way, we can replace gt plus one with a model of your own choosing, if you are the attacker. You might say, we can use... Uh, anomaly detection mechanisms on the server to detect those sorts of anomalies, you're right. But at the same time, the attacker could become more sophisticated. They could reward the model that they have and the way that they are going to train that on their local machine to be highly accurate. So you cannot use accuracy as an anomaly signal. Your model is doing most of the time the correct thing. And at the same time, they can penalize this model in such a way that it's going to deviate from what the server considers normal. So it's, you can train it to evade those anomaly detection systems. And there are only a handful of them. They're going to be using some machine learning techniques. You're going to be using the same thing. Try to uh, avoid all of them. This was in one step, replacing GT plus one with X replacing the global model with a model of your own choosing. The malicious player can choose to do so in tiny steps, perhaps over 10 iterations of communications. And then these updates are going to be very similar to GT. And then after a while, the model is totally replaced. So was everything clear? Okay, awesome.